Okay. Um, yeah, fortunately, um, I'll be covering uh, some of the uh, some of the things that Dr. Anand yeah. already covered. Oh, that's okay. um, uh, but you see, in a way, I, I am not authorized to talk about what I'm going to talk about. Right? I, I haven't been uh, initiated through a cop crew into the tradition of Thai music and into uh, this sort of lineage that reaches from the gods of music uh, to uh, uh, the present day, right? Um, but it, 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 it's this that I want to talk about. I, I want to talk about this uh, this aspect of traditional and ritual, right? That it, that extends um, uh, beyond oneself to to the source of music itself, right? And and that the Y crew tradition, right? Uh, is uh, something that calls attention to the fact that when I give my respect, my grateful respect to my teacher, right, it, it is not the person that is important, but the person as a vehicle for this traditional knowledge, right, or, or the, this knowledge of... Um, of uh, music, and the music itself may uh, establishes a connection, you know, with what extends back, you know, beyond the present. Right. Um, I, I wanted to to highlight this this uh, uh, this traditional uh, um, continuity, right, and connection with the, the, the development of uh, intellectual property and the idea of copyright and, and sort of to compare them and to see in what ways uh, in, they're incompatible, but in their incompatibility how it calls attention to uh, um, the problems that, that, that we face when, when, we're, when we're dealing with Tradition, ritual, uh, culture, um, and um, I in the context of globalization, right? So, anyways, I, I talk about the tampon, right? And and again, the the tampon um, is um, is connected to. Uh, uh, this, this, uh, it is important in this, uh, in all aspects of traditional music, right? If you look at uh, the writings of Kravat, uh, um, well, this is actually from uh, um, Parasirapon. Yes, Parasitapong Karan Ponkit. Is anyone familiar with him? Uh, he is a monk, but he makes Sri uh, Sakru, right, the Huakon. Um, and, um, and he writes um, explaining uh, that the Pipat musician and the Natasin dancer revere Paraparakontap. Narot, right? They believe that he is the one who controls the musical rhythms and who conducts the playing of the instruments and dancing. And thus he's associated with the tampon drum. Uh, and this drum has the function of controlling the rhythm of the pipat ensemble. And that's why the tampon is the symbol of Paraparankontap and why he's greatly revered, right? He's, it's placed in a position higher than the other instruments 
as, as Dr. Anant pointed out. Right? Uh, the person who conducts the Y Ku ceremony should honor the, the Kru tampon first and then fill up a conch shell with pure water, which is used to wash the tampon, whereupon the water becomes sacred. Then the water is used to bless the other instruments and then the participants in the ceremony. Um, and again, this is uh, what, what Dr. Uh, Anant already explained, Visinakam and Panja Sinkon and Parakontap. Okay, and uh, there's a uh, Prasidapong also uh, painted a picture of um, Narot, right, Parakontap. And again, uh, uh, th this is what uh, Dr. Anand already uh, explained, right? That's why I asked about the 6 and 12 baht offerings. And um, again, here's uh, Parankonta. Now, the German philosopher from the 20th century, uh, Walter Benjamin, has a very famous essay, right? The, you know, the work of art in the age of uh, technological reproducibility. Um, uh, what he's trying to explain is that um, when the work of art is able to be uh, reproduced, right, there is a kind of shift in the way we understand the work of art. Uh, uh, the way we experience art changes as art changes, right? You know, that originally uh, the original work of art had a deep significance, right? And um, uh, the originality of the work of art, its, its special place, right? Uh, 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 is... is um, uh, it, it is diminished, you know, with the ability to reproduce it, right? And But he begins talking about this in terms of the loss, not only of the originality, but ara. And ara, the ara of the work of art, is related to ultimately its ritual function, right? And again, uh, this decay of auras is connected to the desire of contemporary masses to bring things closer spatially and humanly, which is just as ardent as their bent towards overcoming the uniqueness of every reality by accepting its reproduction. So every day the urge grows stronger to get a hold of an object at a very close range by way of its likeness and reproduction, right? And uh, again, um, you know, originally the earliest artworks originated in the service of rituals, first magical and then religious, right? Um, you know, uh, and again, no investigation of the work of art in the age of its technological reproducibility can overlook these connections. They lead to a crucial insight. For the first time in world history, technological reproducibility emancipates the work of art by its, from its parasitic subservience to ritual. And to an ever-increasing degree, the work reproduced becomes the reproduction of a work designed for reproducibility. You notice that he's talking about this in positive terms, right? But what he's talking about is that once we are able to reproduce copies of a work of art, we break it free from its ritual connections, right? The very ritual connections that, that are present in the Y crew, uh, in Thai traditional music, Right, uh, this idea of uh, uh, music as something that connects us back to some source, right, or a sacred source, um, 
I'll come back to Benjamin later, you know, because we'll have to uh, react to him and criticize him. Uh, of course, Adorno's idea of the co uh, the culture industry, right, is that you know uh, the culture industry is this this contemporary age in which we're living in, where culture doesn't work from the bottom up anymore. Uh, you know, a culture is, is is connected to words like cultivation, right? Something to help something grow, and it and it's supposed to come from uh, the experience of of the people, right? Uh, and Adorno says culture is also involves a protest against itself, so it's not smooth. It's always reacting against itself and changing and developing. But the culture industry works from the top down, right? People, uh, corporations, uh, 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 politics, they control culture and control what we see and, and what we understand, right? Um, and so, this, I, I, th I wanted to connect this with copyright, right? Copyright, you know. Uh, you know, we talk about musical copyright, right? Who owns a piece of music? And how is it controlled by the culture industry, right? Um, and again, uh, this goes back to the 19th century with uh, printed music, um, and um, the birth of pop culture, right? Popular culture, right? But notice that that copyright suggests that it presumes that a single author uh, merits exclusive rights over a copyrighted work, because it's only through an author's individual genius that a copyrightable work can be crea created, right? So notice the emphasis on the author, right? When the author, you know, the work comes into existence when the author creates it, right? But as Dr. Anand pointed out, that, that you know, in traditional music, there's this very strong sense of no self, right? You know, you, you prepare for the performance, right? so that that music works through you, right? Like I, he used the word clean, you have to be clean. Why do you need to be clean? Uh, well, so that you are a conduit for the expression of a music that, you know, is connected to the sacred itself, right? And then, uh, again, um, that the idea of giving copyright promotes international trade and investment. It provides for the development of lo local cultural industries, right? Um, but, but, uh, but, again, this idea that uh, maybe for the developing world, right, outside of the people who wrote the TRIPS agreement and so on. Um, one wonders whether such an approach protects traditional music that is not only a diverse and abundant resource, but also a marketable commodity, right? Like, so in a way, the idea that uh, copyright can protect uh, traditional music it can protect it only in the sense that it makes it into a commodity that can be sold, right? But then again, this destroys the whole essence of uh, music in, in connection with ritual and traditional culture, right? You, you notice that, again, the rights... Um, uh, the, the right of reproduction, the right of distribution, um, again, is related to not only the single ownership, but, but 
but also the producer, those who control, you know, uh, the dissemination of music, the copying of music in phonograms, right, and their distribution. And, of course, uh, corporations are not related to the authority of the tradition, but the authority of the investor, right? And so this is, uh, uh, and this brings up the whole problem of authority, right? Um, I mentioned, how, how much time do I have there? Um, Oh, almost finished. Okay. Okay. Anyway, like, I, 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 I in, in the philosophy of intellectual property, um, there, there is an idea that starts with uh, Morris Cohen that, that Peter Drehos begins to speak about, right? That it, um, it is, uh, the dominant f feature of property is the right to exclude others, right? Um, it is like not only a dominium over things, a property over things, but an imperium, right, as well, over fellow human beings. So the right to exclude, right? And, um, and Simon Harrison, in his in his article about uh, ritual and intellectual property, right, points out that what needs examining is how property rights and religious symbolism are themselves established and how they are protected if they are challenged or infringed, right. Um, and and that, that's why I wanted to mention, like, uh, the Ong Prapilap, right, and again, like Dr. Anand pointed out, that the Ong Prapilap is the highest piece of music which is played during the Wai Ku ceremony. Not everyone can play it, right? You need to, um, uh, uh, you, you need to um, uh, be accepted, right? And, and not only that, but the dancer of the Ong Prapilap um, you know, has to be carefully selected. And so, like King Rama IX, in order to keep the, the, the dance of the Prapilap uh, alive, right, uh, bestowed, uh, uh, you know, his blessings on four senior teachers of dance, right? Uh, like Arkom, Sayakom, you know him, he's very famous, right? And and, and there are four all together. Right. Um, and so the, 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 this is what I wanted to bring up, right? The, 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 the idea of various kinds of authority, uh, the, the tension between uh, tra traditional authority, right, that you can see in uh, the Y crew in the Ong Prapilap, right? Uh, I mean, uh, th this, there's, uh, I don't completely understand this, but um, uh, there are the four teachers of the Ong Prapilap that, that, uh, that King Rama IX initiated, right? But then there is another uh, uh, performance of uh, the Prapilap outside of this official channel, right? And, um, and and uh, what is the proper authority? What is the proper line of authority? Even uh, traditional uh, authority has its uh, conflicts as well, right? Um, that, that's why I put the, the Krut, the Ram Krut, right? The, that, uh, again, it's the authority of the king, right, the vehicle of uh, um, pranarai, right. So, the, what, what, you know, I, I want to suggest that 
if you consider traditional music um, against uh, the the type of authority that you find in copyright law, that again the, the, they're incompatible, right? One deals with um, uh, a, a kind of religious connection to uh, the source of all things, and the purpose of music is to open up uh, like a, a connection to that uh, source, right? And whereas uh, intellectual copyright law is based on an authority of uh, the corporation and finance and investors, right? And uh, if you want to translate uh, traditional authority into the language of uh, of copyright law, then you destroy it, right? Uh, uh, because uh, you've lost the traditional uh, concept of authority, right? I, I mentioned Abby Warburg and um, and finally Walter Benjamin. Uh, Walter Benjamin talks about the dialectical image, right? And the dialectical image is to see the various forms of history, um, the, uh, uh, the various images of history uh, um, in a kind of dual way. One is w the way in which they presented themselves in their historical time and place which has an, a kind of familiarity to it, right? And the other is to try to look at it in a way in which you see a kind of secret history stored up within it, right? Um, uh, I mean, when I, if I see a billboard, if I listen to a piece of music, there's a kind of familiarity to it, right? Uh, but there is a, a kind of secret history that leads this image or piece of music to appear when it appears, right? And the, for him, the job of the philosopher is to, to, to see this dual nature of the image, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, he, he talks about like, um, a dream interpretation. Right. Um, but again, in traditional music, we, we don't want to just see all these uh, uh, the, the gods and, and, and uh, uh, the traditional forms as mere dreams, right? Because in that way they lose uh, their, their function, the function of uh, the, the, their authoritative function within tradition, their ability to connect us to something or to preserve something, right? So, I, 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 I think Benjamin is important to understand the nature of the problem, right? Uh, the, the essence of authority uh, and, uh, and the dual nature of uh, various f traditional forms, right? But, but again, um, I, I don't think we can follow him all the way, right? Uh, we need to uh, find various mechanisms to, to try to understand traditional authority and preserve it. And, and of course, I have no answers <laughs> to any of this. I, I, uh, I just wanted to bring up a, a problem, right. so that that's all. Right. Thank you very much. This is, uh, of course, a controversial subject as well. Oh yeah, when, yeah. Whenever yeah. you bring copyright law and the traditional uh, aspect of things, uh, the uh, no way to finish it easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, if you have any question, now we can. Thank you so much. Okay.